Adobe Media Encoder CS6 or CC is a program that is created for you to convert video and audio to formats for either delivery to something or someone, or perhaps you want to increase your workflow speed by creating clips the same size as your sequences. Or if you're collaborating to go ahead and create a, a workflow, a faster workflow by giving them a clip or audio that it matches their sequence settings. So that way they can increase their speed in their editing process. Um, this is especially true if they're working on an older 32 bit program. So keep that in mind. So you may be working on a 64 bit program like Adobe Premiere, but let's say you're sending it to someone, you're collaborating with someone who's working in Final Cut 7. So you may want to make this the size of their sequence and a codec that they can read easily. So that way they don't have to sit and render for a very, very long time. So again, workflow is very important and is key when it comes to video editing. If you haven't noticed by now. Okay. So what we're going to do here is very basically select on these windows here. You have a Q window to the right of that. You have a preset browser on the bottom. It's an encoding window and media watch folder window on the right hand side. We're not going over everything here because it's a how to video right to the point. So we're just going to go into a brief introduction on how you export or convert a video file and an audio file very quickly. So what I will do is I will select on my desktop. I have two clips. I have a video clip and I have an audio file. My video file or clip is 1920 by 1080. I'm going to select that and drag it here to this window. When I select on that on the upper right hand side, it will say QuickTime. Here it will say HD 1080. I, so it's uh, 1920 by 1080. And let's say we wanted to change that. So I'm going to select on there and it says export settings. That's what the window says. And then here on the right hand side, it says format QuickTime. You can select on there and change it to whatever format you want to change it to. Again, we want to stay specifically specific to whatever it is that we're going to so that way again you increase your workflow speed and that's key so we're going to select on preset here it says h uh, 1080i let's say but it's 2997 i want to go to 720p but it says 24 so that's something we don't want but i'll select on there and then i'll change to a custom setting so down here I will see a video tab. It says video codec H264. Let's say I want to change that to Apple ProRes 422. I can scroll down on the right hand side of that window, basic video settings, and I will go ahead and increase the quality to 100%. You'll see here is 19, uh, 1280 by 720. And I'll scroll down a little bit further. It says frame rate 24. We don't want 24. We want 29.97. So I'll select on there. And now it has changed to 29.97. So again, 1280 by 720, 29.97. It's uh, 720p. So we have to make sure that our aspect is square pixels. And the render depth is 2448, whichever one you want to select. And once you're done with that, the last thing you want to check is this here. You'll see here it says export video and export audio. So you want them both selected if you want video and audio. If you don't want to have one selected, then go ahead and deselect one. So that way that doesn't come out in your uh, settings there or in your export file. I can also select down here where it says use maximum render quality if I want to, to have the maximum render quality, but I already changed it to 100. And now I need to select the destination. So I'll click on OK on this where it says output file back in the window here, the queue. Select on there and you have to select where you want to go along with the name. So here it says making the real episode one. Let's say if I want to select and make it 
two. And I'm gonna select desktop just for argument's sake so you can see the file up here. Click on save. And there is a green arrow on the upper right hand side of the queue window. Select on there. Towards the bottom of this window or these windows, you will see encoding. It will play your video by default. And you will see the bar scroll through to show you that it's encoding and the speed in which it's encoding. Now here you will see that most of the time, depending on your machine, it will go very, very quickly and much, much faster than real time. So um, always be mindful of that, that uh, it depends again on your system. Graphic cards are very helpful and of course RAM doesn't hurt either. So again, being a 64-bit program, it will utilize all of the uh, items that you have in your computer to, to make your computer as fast as possible. And that will become very, very helpful in converting files. So it's almost done here. And you should see a video appear on my desktop, which I do. I have it on the bottom right hand side. So if I go to my desktop, I will see this video appear. And again, that's my video file that has been created. That's my 60, um, my 720p footage there. If I want to do audio, I'll select on the audio, drag it in here. Same thing. I will select on what kind of file I want to make it. Here it says F4V. I'll click on the presets on the export settings it says f4v i'm going to change that make it aiff right now it's an mp3 the file is called mandatory mp3.mp3 export audio codec uncompressed 48 kilohertz is a sample rate if you want to change that again you can change it here and if you want any settings, you don't want it to be stereo, whatever the case may be, you can change those settings here. I'll click on OK, and now it is ready. It says Users, Administrator, Desktop. If that's something you want to put to the desktop, which I do, then that's fine. If not, once again, select on there and change the destination. Once it's ready, make sure to select it and go to the green arrow which is a start queue and you will see that it go ahead and encode that and now I have an additional file in my desktop which is called mandatory AIF so I have that one and I have this one which is the mp3 and that's how you utilize in a very basic manner Adobe Media Encoder CS6 there are more advanced options and I'll go into that in another tutorial Thanks for visiting Making the Real.